Imagine shooting a man with your last bullet and he stands there unfazed. No, just kidding. Jinbin knocked him out with one punch, but most of the credit goes to Zoro. No matter how much people shit on Luchi, I would say he did go toe to toe with a Yonko and a Yonko commander after all. On his level, it's impossible to be honest, but he still managed to. Because this is not a normal Yonko we are talking about. This is a Yonko who not only frisbeed a Gohose, but also hit bombs at three of them in this chapter. This chapter was fun, I'm not even gonna lie. From Luchi vs Zoro to Luffy playing baseball and the giant robot standing up in the end, I enjoyed it all. Starting off with Saint Marcus Mars, I knew somewhere that the Labo face shield is gonna get broken and Mars did break it after all. But not only that, him appearing in front of Luchi said a lot about Mars. Luchi is a guy who doesn't give a shit who you are. He saw a Yonko and a chief staff of revolutionary like the number two and said, fuck it, we ball. But when Mars appeared in front of him, you know why Oda only showed Luchi's face and not his whole body because down there he is shitting his pants and seeing, seeing that creature. To be honest, I would do the same thing. Yeah, and also I would have the same reaction, like utterly flabbergasted. But after all, it's Rob Lucci we are talking about. If that man is shitting his pants seeing a bird, you know that this bird is the biggest damn bird out there. Even Jinbei was like, what the fuck is that flying thingy? What I did, what I did like about Lucci is that even after all of this crap, he requested a Gorose in an injured state that please pardon his homie and not hit him. This is the second time I saw a guy making a direct request to the Elder Star. Then we get back to Luffy enjoying his time with giants and the giants were like, wow, such big animals. They didn't even give a shit that these are the top dogs of the One Piece universe that they are looking at. Giants are savage, straight up savage. They don't, they just don't care who the fuck is in front of them. Also, I can't even blame them. These elders come out of their closet once a century. So it's like very hard to understand who, who these guys are to certain people. We get a small chibi map of Egghead and even an update on Sanji carrying potentially dead Vegapunk. I guess he's alive because this man is not even dead from two chapters. So it just makes sense that he's, uh, he's gonna be alive or either he's gonna die just when the message gets like spread to the world. But then Topman, I mean Pumba, gave out a big roar and I feel this man is the reason we don't know what Cobra said to Sabo cause that time as well someone roared and I bet the boar is the only animal which can create such a big noise other than any of them, especially a roar or it could be emo. And he gave out such a tremendous haki with a roar that Luffy started stripping. Even his scar went flying away. And the next panel, Luffy was adjusting his marks. Like, bro, this thing is silly and serious at the same time. Even Broggy gave out that... Even Broggy gave out that one piece what the fuck just happened face. Topman attacked Dory and Broggy and turned his teeth into blades. I didn't know that was a feature of a mythical Zoan until now. Like, we are not confirmed that these guys are mythical Zoans, but even if they are, they have some similar paramecia abilities like Luffy. Yeah, paramecia. I made that word up. And it just makes no sense, bro. Also, like, this just gave me some dice dice fruit vibes. Two new attacks by giants. Sun Shield Swalin, pardon me if I misp mispronounced it. It's said to be a shield which stands in front of the sun protecting others from the sun's heat but here it's kind of opposite instead of protecting the world from the sun they are defending the sun from the world and especially the world government you you look the wordplay there you look the wordplay Uda is a genius and split skylda a skylda means duty or obligation again i'm pa pardon me if i mispronounced it but this means that this attack's name eventually is Split Duty. Like it's an attack used for saving a friend, I guess, because to protect their friends is a duty. 
as this attack was used right after Dory and Broggy said, "He's our homie. You mess with him, you mess with us. Get blasted away." Then we move on to Bro, it is so creepy. Saturn pouting was not on my bucket list. Was not a thing was not a thing I ever imagined I will see in my entire life. This whole scene was funny. Not only Luffy created a bat from a tree after he munched it like a corn and converted that shit to a finely designed baseball bat. I don't know where he got that paint from, but also a helmet from thin air and blasted three Goroses with a shot. I know that the, these guys didn't get damaged, but only Marcus Mars and Ethan Baron are the elders who didn't get hit by Luffy even once. My man covered half of them in this arc. and his bounty doesn't even make sense after this he's just punching the top dogs of the government that nobody messes with even kaido then this last panel is just too much info dump bonnie meeting three vice admirals bro is even cracking his knuckles just like give me a break give give that damn girl a break let her just come there even before that these guys are like preparing kizaru asking for therapy after what he did this whole arc Dude is officially done with this BS. Like he's just done. I don't know the next time we see him, he won't be in the same mood. York having the same Luchi reaction. Sanji running to I don't know where, and the giant robot finally standing up. It's like 10, 15 chapters or something we had an update about this robot, and now we have a three-way, three-week break. I'm not complaining. Whatever Oda would have done, it would have been a cliffhanger after all. This chapter was actually fun and enjoyable and I really liked it. So do let me know your thoughts about this chapter and what stood out for you. You want to have some discussion about this and I'll see you soon.